Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio from AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is a frozen evaporator coil scenario on an air conditioning system where we're measuring a low pressure and low vapor sat temp. I want you to be able to tell what the problem is when you're checking the charge because it can be one of three problems when you have a very low saturated temperature. Remember that anytime your pressure converted to saturated temperature on your low side, anytime that that saturated temperature is below 32 degrees, that means that the refrigerant's below 32 degrees and the air crossing the outside of the coil is exposed to that low temperature and the humidity in the air will freeze under the coil. That's the problem. You're gonna end up with a frozen, completely block solid frozen evaporator coil. And so right now the coil is defrosted and the unit's only been running for about seven minutes. But I want you to know whether the problem is a low refrigerant charge, a liquid line restriction or low indoor airflow. In this case, it is low indoor airflow, but I just want you to know how to quickly tell it's not a low refrigerant charge. So this system has a thermostatic expansion valve and the subcooling is 9.2. So what we do is we take the pressure right here, 164 PSIG, and that's with the red hose on the small liquid line. And if we have R22 selected, we're gonna have a saturated temperature of 88.4. Now our liquid line temperature right here is 79.2. So 88.3 minus 79.3, and we have a subcoing of nine degrees. So if, if the subcoing is nine degrees and up on the rating plate, it says a target subcoing of 10 degrees, then we're within plus or minus three degrees of the target, which means that we have a good charge. If we had a subcoing that was low compared to the target subcoing, then we would be undercharged. And if we had a high subcooling compared to the target subcooling, then we, we would be overcharged. But in this scenario, we have a correct charge, so we know that it's not a low refrigerant charge problem. Next, I want to discuss how to know if you have a liquid line restriction, which we don't have right now. Now, a liquid line restriction would cause a very high superheat. And a liquid line restriction would be like a clog in the metering device where it's only allowing just a tiny amount of refrigerant through, or maybe you have a clog strainer before or after the TXV. Uh, or maybe you have a clogged filter dryer before the TXV. So no matter what the problem is, it's restricting the refrigerant flow too much and it's not allowing enough refrigerant into the evaporator coil. And so what you'll have is you'll have a very low pressure. So you'll have a very low saturated temperature and you'll have a very high suction line temperature. And that's because you have a decent heat load crossing the, crossing the coil. And remember that the heat is in the air and the whole point is that the refrigerant traveling through the inside of the evaporator coil is absorbing the heat from the air crossing the outside of the coil. That's how the system works. So if you have a normal heat load inside the building uh, and you have a small amount of refrigerant, your suction line temperature is gonna be real high. It may be as high as the actual temperature that is within the building, but your saturated temperature is gonna be real low because the pressure exiting the metering device and entering the evaporator coil and, and entering over here, it's gonna be real low. So that's how you have a big spread and you'll have a, a, a high total superheat measured out here. In this case, uh, you know that, you see that we have a, a normal to just slightly low superheat. Before I get into the low indoor airflow, I just wanna mention a liquid line restriction is gonna be a normal to slightly high subcooling and your total superheat is going to be very high. So that's how you'll know if you have a liquid line restriction problem. In this case, we have a very low superheat, so we know we have low indoor airflow, and what's happening is the TXV is doing its job properly. The TXV's job is to maintain superheat across the indoor evaporator coil. So the TXV is going to try to maintain right about 8 to 12 degrees of superheat. So What's gonna happen here is, right now, the TXV is struggling to maintain eight degrees of superheat. It is because the indoor airflow, the heat load crossing the outside of the coil is very low. We have about half of the airflow that we would normally have, and so you gotta remember you're gonna have about, you should have 400 CFMs for every 12,000 BTUs of system capacity, and this system right here is a three-ton system. So three-ton, 36,000 BTUs, so that means that you should have about 1200 CFMs and we actually have about 600 CFMs right now. And so that's a problem and the TXV is doing its job and it's limiting the amount of refrigerant into the indoor evaporator coil. However, that is, it's higher, the amount of refrigerant entering into the evaporator coil is higher than a liquid line restriction problem. And the TXV is trying to maintain a good superheat. 
So, uh, it's not, the, the TXV is not going to be able to maintain a good saturated temperature though. So, that's, that's the problem here. It's maintaining a good superheat. You have a, a normal subcooling, but your saturated temperature is low, and that's how you know that you have a low indoor airflow problem because the TXV is still maintaining a good superheat while you have a very low saturated temperature. Now before checking the refrigerant charge at the outdoor unit, what we normally do is when we arrive on site, we pull the disconnect at the outdoor unit and then we check the indoor air filter while the indoor air handler is off and then after that we turn the air handler on in air conditioning mode. We check the airflow uh, using one of the of multiple methods. Uh, one method is using an induct hot wire anemometer. You can use the TESP readings and compare them to the manufacturer's literature, or you can use the temporized formula, and we have videos on each one of those topics in the description section below. And we would also be trying to determine what the problem is. So what we could do is we could uh, measure the static pressure in the return and supply side to see which side is higher, and that would indicate that the problem er is originating in that part of the system. You can take a pressure drop reading across the indoor evaporator coil to see if that's clogged on the back side of the coil. You could take a uh, static pressure drop across the, the filter. Maybe that's maybe it's just a restrictive filter or something like that. Uh, but you need to determine what the airflow problem is. If you want to learn more about troubleshooting, check out our book, the Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning. We have troubleshooting low airflow problems. Right here is the troubleshooting scenario. So we compressor valves, contaminated refrigerant, low indoor airflow, low refrigerant charge. So we have a bunch of different scenarios in this book. And we also go over just the preparation of a system for refrigerant, checking the charge, troubleshooting, you know, the port access, how to, all the step-by-step -step procedures that we use out in the field. So check out the full outline for this, available over at acservicetech.com slash acbook. We also have a thousand question workbook that we developed. And we also give an answer key with the workbook so you can test your knowledge as a self-study guide. We also have our quick reference cards that can be used out in the field. And so we have this right here for target, su target superheat. We also have subcooling. We have a PT chart, refrigerant weights. We have our troubleshooting guide with all the indicators such as superheat, subcooling, delta T, vapor set, temp, liquid set, temp, capacity, compressor amps, evap coil freezing. And we have the different scenarios in which it could be right here. So all of our products are available over at Amazon and also at our website at acservicetech.com. And we also have an ebook available over at our website and on Google Play. Make sure to check out all of our free resources at our website, such as the, the podcast, the quick tips, the articles, the calculators, the Q&A, all of that stuff is available right there at your fingertips at acservicetech.com. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.